Thank you. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 1479 in the name of George Adam on, believe it or not, Paisley, voted Britain's <laughs> top town. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Was those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press the request to speak buttons now. And I called on George Adam to open the debate. Mr Adam, please. Thank you, President Officer. I can tell by your tone there you're completely surprised that this debate is basically Paisley is awesome, please discuss. Uh, but that is the case because I'm glad to be taking this debate because the Scottish, to the Scottish Parliament, as it shows the progress of our great town has made in recent years, rather than complain about the many challenges that we face, we've gone out and led the way in the town centre's regeneration. Today's Paisley Daily Express has a headline that says, MSP George set to talk up town in Parliament debate. Now, that possibly could have been a headline for just about every single debate I've been a part of uh, during my time here. But it shows you that the whole town is actually behind this idea of this positive Paisley message. Now, I've known uh, what you're all thinking. It's George Adam talking about his hometown. Now, there's a novel idea. But the award that we're celebrating is quite interesting. The Academy for Urbanism Award uh, was given to Paisley in November last year. And one of the interesting things about that is that since uh, 2006, when it actually began, no other Scottish town has ever won this award. It's uh, much like uh, my own football team of St Myrna competition that's no longer with us, the Anglo-Scottish Cup. We were the only Scottish team to win that as well. But we beat off competition from Barnsley in Yorkshire, Chelmsford and Essex for the title of Great Town 2018. And uh, one of the things that this is on the back of is the fantastic and uh, uh, regeneration uh, aspect to the UK City of Culture bid 2021. Now, although we never got that, the positivity and the belief that we can actually do something in the town has remained. And since I was first elected as Paisley's M MSP in 2011, I've always said I would take a Team Paisley approach to everything that I did. And perhaps I have to mention this before, uh, but it's always been about a positive Paisley agenda. Because Paisley has a great past and has been involved in just about everything to do with our nation's past. But it is also has a fantastic future. There is now a feeling in the town of what can we do together, how we can deal with the challenges that we face. And this positive Paisley agenda is what makes the difference. Our future is indeed looking good as we look to how we can improve our lot in the world. Last Christmas, and there's not a line for a song, uh, Paisley uh, Business Improvement District, Paisley First, had a winter festival that hasn't seen the like out with our major cities. Myself and my family went along to it, and I even donned some ice skates after not having skated since I was eight year old. Uh, that wasn't yesterday. And uh, I managed to look like Bambi on ice while I was uh, doing that. But it showed you the fun. My own daughter said as we left, she said, Jessica said to me, she says, you know, Dad, I can't believe we spent all day in Paisley Town Centre and we've had a fantastic day here. And that's what it's about. It's about creating an environment where you can make memories for your family and you can actually see that, make them even prouder of where they come from. The Coates Memorial Church was closed as a religious building last year. But do we complain in Paisley? No, we set up a trust led by local businessman Ian Henderson to find a new use for it and start a crowdfunder into changing it into an entertainment venue. Presiding officer, this shows you the difference in, the, in confidence in Paisley ever since the 2021 bid. And uh, Paisley is showing the way forward for other towns and how we shape our future. This, uh, this is uh, the... Yes, I will do. Tom Arthur. I'm very grateful to my friend and colleague George Adam for giving way. I declare an interest to someone born in Paisley. I just wonder. I just wonder. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing right now, Mr. Gibson. Um, I just wonder if Mr. Adam um, agrees with me that the example that Paisley's setting is, a po is positive, not just for the people of Paisley, but for many of the surrounding communities. For example, in Barhead and Johnston and Linwood and Lockwinock and my constituency of Renfrewshire South, who are tapping into that positivity and energy. I think so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Adam. It's you now. 
Yes, uh, uh, Mr Arthur makes a valid point because as the capital town of Renfrewshire, Paisley, if Paisley does well, then the rest of the county does well <laughs> as well. And I, I think that's important that we see Paisley as the heart of our county because it always was the way in the past. As a boy from Barhead, I've often heard that the big day out for you on a Saturday was going into the centre of the universe <laughs> and uh, shopping in our town centre. So it's uh, really, when you look at what we've actually done is we're talking about the art of shaping our own future, taking on the challenges I've mentioned about the Coates Memorial. And also we have an ambitious project called Baker Street, which is run by Paisley Community Trust. We want to bring a cinema theatre back into the heart of our town. But as well as all that, we've actually had a situation, I remember during the last uh, campaign, the BBC luxury camper van came to uh, the town centre and we were in next to the Abbey and uh, the GMS presenter asked me, you know, what has the Scottish Government done for the town centre? I said, just look around you. It's all around us here at the moment because it was the Scottish Government investment that helped create the actual investment that was there for bringing people back to live in the town centre. And I think that's made a big difference in Paisley in the centre. And also we've got projects happening in Love Street where St Murn used to actually have their ground, football ground. And there's now a, a, a radical project to regenerate the west end of Paisley as well. So it just shows you that, you know, there are problems, there are difficulties. But we are constantly just trying to find ways to move things on. Renfrewshire Council haven't been held back either. They've actually been really involved in this as well as they have just shut the Paisley Town Hall and uh, the museum in the High Street. Now that's not for the negative way that we normally talk about in this place. It's mainly because they're going to go in for a radical overhaul and both buildings will be made fit for the 21st centuries. And the judges of the Great Town uh, Award noted that although we did not win the UK City of Culture bid, the bid did win over the people of Paisley and in turn permanently changed the narrative of the place and the direction of travel. We used our heritage and culture to change that narrative in the town. We are, uh, we are in the next stage for our old historic town. The 21st century will be when we take this further forward. I'm biased, presiding officer, because it's my town, uh, they're my people, and it's my place in the world. But no matter what anyone says, you'll never get anyone in Paisley to talk negatively about this journey that we are on. We've always been proud of our town. We're just glad that the rest of the world's catching up with us. Thank you very much. Jamie Green to be followed by Neil Bibby. Mr Green, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and um, can I thank uh, George Adam for bringing this debate to the Chamber this evening uh, so early in the new year. Uh, it's a real huge surprise to hear uh, Mr Adam talk about Paisley. It's something he doesn't do very often in the Chamber. I'm sure the official report will reflect that. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, it's, a, it's a great award uh, to be given. As he said, uh, there were, he was up, uh, Paisley was up against some fierce competition from other UK cities in the uh, Academy of Urbanism Awards. Um, it was actually uh, just about two years ago when uh, George Adam brought a, 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 another debate to this parliament on uh, Paisley's bid for City of Culture and I participated like many other members from other parties participated in that debate. Um, and there was a huge amount of excitement in the chamber I think uh, uh, to get behind that and I think that whole process, whilst it was disappointing that Paisley wasn't successful, uh, that whole process really shone a light onto Paisley in the region, as, as Tom Arthur pointed out, the, the whole of Renfrewshire. Um, it really uh, focused minds from uh, right across the political spectrum, from across different bits of government, local government, uh, national government, uh, to uh, really put together a strong bid. The event that we had in the parliament was one of the best events I've been to uh, in, of an eve uh, in this place. Um, and it was a shame. We, we congratulate uh, Coventry, obviously, but uh, I think that was the start of, of another part of a journey uh, for Paisley. Um, the sheer volume of support that it got from celebrities, from business, uh, from academia, uh, all pointed towards the reasons why it should have won. But as, as many have said, it was the start of a journey. If I could quote, actually, uh, from a couple of local politicians from Paisley, I think it's important that we reflect their voices in this. The leader, Renfrewshire Council, uh, Councillor Nicholson, said that Paisley's UK City of Culture Bid did a huge amount to lift the town's profile, reputation, and self-confidence. 
And I think that's the key point here is actually the self-confidence bit uh, that we should focus on. Um, we said that that journey would continue, and clearly it has, uh, as reflected in the, uh, the award that it won. Uh, another councillor, uh, Councillor McIntyre from Northwest Paisley, said it's been good for bringing people into Paisley who hadn't been in for a long time or in some cases hadn't been in at all. It raised the profile of the town and the residents have been supportive and it's put pride back into town. Now, I've got no doubt that the pride was always there. Uh, it's quite obvious that that pride has always been there going back uh, decades, if not centuries. Uh, Paisley has a proud legacy uh, of culture, of design, uh, is, uh, in this specific award, uh, which goes to uh, reflect improvements in urban areas and rewards towns which have made a lot of progress, uh, have indeed proven that Paisley has developed. It's not without its problems. Mr. Adam reflected that in his speech. Uh, last year, uh, more shops closed in Paisley than opened. But it's no different to many towns and cities across the country. They're all struggling. The high street is struggling. But it's what you do about it that counts. And it's what Paisley's doing about it that matters. Uh, you'll see if you walk uh, uh, down some of the empty shop fronts in Paisley, uh, they have been covered uh, with a, a graphic, a wallpaper, saying you could be here, you know, bring your business here. Uh, and it's really talking outwards to business, saying come uh, and make the high street your own again. Uh, there are many things going on. The redevelopment of the, of the, uh, uh, the uh, town hall, uh, and, and, and more um, investment in the museum uh, in Paisley. The Glasgow City deal hopefully will have some uh, benefits and knock-on effects, but there are still some points of progress to be made, including things like the, the Glasgow Airport Rail Link, which I think will uh, ultimately benefit Paisley as well if that goes ahead. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Adam uh, in the short time we have this evening to talk about his most favourite subject in the Parliament, that of Paisley, but also uh, as a regional member for the West of Scotland to be very proud of everything that's going on there. Uh, and I'd particularly like, uh, uh, just in closing, to pay uh, tribute to some of the excellent work going uh, on at the uh, West, Scotland, West College Scotland Paisley campus. Uh, that whole uh, organisation educates over 22,000 people uh, in Scotland, many of which right across the West region, and is really setting the, uh, the foundations of some excellent career opportunities for our young people. And really that's what this is all about, is making sure that that part of the world is a positive place to live, grow up and work. Uh, so uh, well done, Paisley. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Neil Bibby, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Mr Gibson will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Bibby, please. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome any opportunity to contribute to a debate about Paisley. It's where I was born, it's where I live, and I've chosen to raise my family, and it's one of the Renfrewshire communities I have the privilege to represent. I'm proud that Paisley was recognised by the Academy of Urbanism in November last year. This followed our bid in 2017 for UK City of Culture. Although ultimately unsuccessful, I want to express my gratitude to all those in the community who helped reinvigorate a sense of pride in the town. But that bid was more about that just a series of events. It was about a vision of economic and social transformation and the promise of a real and lasting legacy. So, presiding officer, we would be doing the community a disservice if we simply come to Parliament to talk about Paisley and pat ourselves on the back, rather than come here to speak up for what Paisley needs now. Living in Paisley, I know it has many positives already been mentioned, including our heritage, our culture, and the many fantastic events that we hold and many fantastic local organisations. I also know that our community and local people face many challenges. Our biggest positive is and has always been our people and the biggest challenge is closing the gap between what Paisley needs and what Paisley gets from all levels of government. Paisley needs and deserves a massive government investment to take forward regeneration and transform the local economy. It is Scotland's largest town and it's time it was treated as such. Promises were made and promises must be kept. Renfrewshire Council also needs a fair funding deal from the Scottish Government. People in Paisley are seeing cut after cut, cuts that have put local services vital to urban renewal at risk, such as Hillview Nursery in Fergusley and the Renfrewshire CAB, with the Law Centre recently closing its doors altogether. We've also seen recently the Council administration hiking up parking charges, an act of economic vandalism which can only chase people away from our town centre, and I hope that policy will be reconsidered. 
Going forward, we need to see an industrial strategy and action on fair work to tackle the levels of poverty, unemployment, insecure work and the wages of working people. To create hundreds of jobs in the future, improve our infrastructure and support businesses, we need to get on uh, with the Glasgow Airport rail link with a stop at Paisley. We must do this because Renfrewshire firms are warning us that, uh, that congestion on the M8 is actually deterring investors from the area. Uh, Jamie Green mentioned West College Scotland. People of all ages and particularly young people need the opportunity to learn and retrain. That's not too much for anyone to ask, but places at the Paisley campus of West College Scotland have been cut by nearly 3,000 over the past three years. We need to see action on that as well. Staff at the REH, one of the town's biggest employers, also need to be properly resourced. Bed numbers at the REH are down nearly 100 since 2012. Local patients need to be protected from creeping centralisation of services from Paisley to Glasgow. We know this because this Friday marks one year since this government's decision to close Paisley's children's ward. On all these issues and more, people in Paisley are being let down. As I've said many times, there is a big difference between what Paisley needs and what Paisley gets. And the last thing that Paisley needs is complacency and complacency from its politicians. The award last year was a remarkable achievement. We should be proud of it and celebrate it. But, President Officer, people in Paisley aren't patting us on the back for the deal our town is getting. And it's outcomes for the people of Paisley that matter most now. Outcomes like more jobs, better jobs and secure jobs. Investment in our infrastructure, a healthier health service, a stronger, fairer local economy, a community that gets its fair share. That is how Paisley is transformed. That's how we unlock Paisley's potential. And that's how we improve the lives of people in Paisley. That's not Paisley just as it is, but as it should be. Thank you, Mr. Bibby. I call Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to speak in this evening's debate, as understandably I've always had a strong affinity for the town in which I was born. And I congratulate my colleague, uh, George Adam, on securing uh, this debate. Of course, Mr. Adam has a burning ambition, which is to ensure that Paisley is mentioned in this parliament uh, as often as Stuart McMillan manages to mention Inverclyde. And of course, uh, at the moment, my strongest connection to Paisley, uh, as I currently live in Colburnie, is the fact that my uh, oldest son is currently studying chemistry at the University of West of Scotland there. Now, tonight we have the chance to celebrate the success of Paisley, not just at November's Academy of Urbanism Awards, but also its success in building upon the momentum of the two-year City of Culture uh, 2021 campaign. Now, Paisley may not have won that bid, but the town has gained an enthusiasm for its identity and culture, which will surely lead to greater success in future. And in terms of footballing uh, successes, uh, I have to point out to George, as he'll undoubtedly know, that I do have a poster on my wall from the 1922 St Mirren match uh, in Barcelona when it, when it was uh, in that tournament, uh, which was given to me uh, after a, a speech at Rio de Canyas in Catalonia. And of course, that commemorates St Mirren being the first uh, Scottish team to play at um, uh, Barcelona as the then ground of the, um, Les Torres, uh, Les Cortes, sorry. Now, um, uh, it's the town's uh, use of heritage and culture to build community confidence that pushed Paisley ahead of the other two great uh, town award finalists. Uh, Chelmsford and Barnsley, which won over the assessors. And this will come as no surprise to those who followed the town's tenacious campaign to use culture and creativity as a catalyst for promoting regeneration. Paisley today is steeped in its industrial history and reflecting upon that period goes some way towards explaining the drive and passion that buddies have today for making the town the greatest in the UK. The Paisley weaving industry was well renowned for both the quality of its designs, including the legendary Paisley pattern, and for its radical workers' movements. In the early 19th century, Paisley's artisanal weavers went on strike to fight for a government truly representative of people and not just the elite, which is remembered by the 1820 Society and the 200th anniversary of that will no doubt be celebrated next year. In addition, Mary Barber, remembered today as the main organiser of the government rent strikes of 1915, was the daughter of a Cobarkin weaver. The indomitable spirit and belief that a better future was within reach remains uh, in the heart of the people of Paisley. And I believe that same spirit drives Paisley to overcome the challenges it now faces, such as areas of high poverty. It would be remiss of me to speak only of Paisley's rich uh, cultural heritage, as its architectural legacy is equally impressive. From the 12th century Paisley Abbey to the Victorian Town Hall to the Paisley Museum and Art Gallery, a visit to Paisley will undoubtedly feature some of the finest architecture in the UK. And central to Paisley's enduring charm is its unwillingness to stand still. 
On 28 December 2018, Paisley Town Hall hosted its last Cayley before closing its doors for a £22 million makeover. It will reopen in 2021 following a redesign led by architects Holmes Miller. The hall, which serves as Paisley's civic and social hub, was designed by Belfast architect William Henry Lynn and began construction in 1879, made possible by a legacy donation by George Aitken Clark, a prominent local thread maker whose statue stood outside the historic venue since its completion. Since then, uh, Mr Clark's likeness has watched over the plethora of events that have taken place in its halls, its ever-changing crowds reflecting Paisley's dynamic and varied culture. One of the most famous buddies, Jerry Rafferty, played early gigs there, as did the more recently celebrated Paolo Nettini. The town hall was also the setting for Cutting a Rug, the central play in Paisley artist John Burns' The Slab Boys trilogy. I'm confident that when the hall reopens its doors in two years, it will further cement its position as both a flagship performance venue and a thriving civic hub fit for the 20th century and beyond. Paisley folk are not people content to look only to the past. The new additions to the town's culture have been innovative and outward looking. In 2017, Paisley opened the Secret Collection, the first ever public accessible museum store on a UK high street. The large basement unit houses tens of thousands of items of Renfrewshire Museum collections, not on display in the main museum, with many treasures not seen by the public for decades. Presiding officer, not only is his innovative project a shining example of how innovation can rejuvenate our high streets in the face of tough times for retail, the secret collection is most importantly reflective of the self-assured identity which the people of Paisley have cemented in recent years. It's about celebrating what makes you great, no matter how big or how small. It's about being unashamed and fiercely proud of your heritage. It's about a society which is free and accessible to all, as long as you're willing to get involved. That's the attitude that won Paisley the Great Town Award in November, and that is the attitude which will carry Paisley through to ever greater success in the future. And I again congratulate George Adam on bringing this debate to the Chamber. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'll call on Graham Day to close for the Government Minister, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Let me begin by joining colleagues from across the Chamber in congratulating Paisley on its award for Best Town in the UK, received from the Academy of Urbanism, which recognised Paisley as a town that's recovered from industrial decline by concentrating on good, affordable housing and a strong town centre. Paisley is rightly proud of its achievements and it's great to see that the spirit of the UK City of Culture bid survives and thrives. The Academy of Urbanism is focused upon identifying, promoting and learning from great places. And this award is a well-deserved accolade for Scotland's largest town, Paisley. Presiding officer, having mentioned Paisley four times already, I fear I'm in danger of becoming a George Adam tribute act. But let me uh, genuinely commend Mr Adam, not only for bringing this debate tonight, but being the unrelenting champion he is for his constituency. The rationale for the award makes impressive reading. It could indeed be characterised, as Mr Adam characterised it, as Paisley is awesome. Paisley is seen to have successfully started to transform through using uh, its unique cultural and heritage assets, celebrating its manufacturing and industrial heritage, reinventing its textile heritage and launching a new destination brand, Paisley uh, is, uh, in the last year. And it's done so in tandem with the Scottish Government, which has made key contributions, including funding towards the coming transformation of Paisley Museum, uh, showcasing the town's unique heritage and collections, the renovation of the iconic Russell Institute, and the learning and cultural hub in the heart of Paisley's High Street. And the wider partnership Team Paisley approach is to continue with the likes of the Police, University of the West of Scotland, Glasgow School of Art, Scottish Enterprise, SDS, Creative Scotland, and perhaps most importantly of all, a number of local and community sector organisations who will all be involved in developing a vision for Paisley Town Centre. The Academy's award for Paisley again and again emphasised the strength of community spirit in the town as a powerful force for change. The judges also recognised that one of Paisley's greatest resources is the level of aspiration, engagement and commitment shown by its local communities in enhancing and improving the built environment. So that continuing interaction with local organisations is vital. Presiding officer, Scotland is a nation of towns and unlike some other developed nations, more than two thirds of our businesses and citizens don't reside in cities. They reside in our towns, our islands and smaller rural communities. We want and we need all our towns and town centres to be vibrant, creative, enterprising and accessible. The town centres are facing challenges as retail patterns change and evolve. It's essential that we support town centres to become more diverse and sustainable, creating footfall through local improvements and partnerships, which can include repurposing buildings for retail, business, housing, social and community enterprise services, leisure, 
and culture, tourism and heritage. In particular, town centre living has significant potential to increase footfall day and night, as well as delivering more homes, safer communities and creating town centres that are creative, diverse and sustainable places. Since 2013-14, uh, the Scottish Government have been pleased to provide over £25 million of housing grant to enable the development of over 400 affordable homes for social rent, for shared equity, including a number of, for older people, as well as a small number for mid-market rent in the town centre of Paisley, including Cotton Street, the former Arnott site, the West End and Love Street. We look forward to continuing to work with the Council to deliver affordable housing, which will contribute to making uh, Paisley an even more attractive place to live. The Government is also promoting and supporting the transformation and regeneration of Scotland's town and town centres through Scotland's Towns Partnership, which supports delivery of the Government's Town Centre Action Plan through information tools and the development of local partnerships. Further, the Scottish Government has supported the establishment of around 40 bids across Scotland, enabling local business and partnerships to vote to invest collectively to deliver improvements and create platforms for local economic growth. And the Paisley First Bid, a key partner of the wider Paisley Partnership Board, is focused on diversifying and developing the town centre, including its management and maintenance. In addition to this, uh, President Officer, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, Economy and Fair Work recently announced the establishment of a £50 million capital town centre fund to enable local authorities to stimulate and support a wide range of investments which encourage town centres to diversify and flourish, creating th uh, footfall through local improvements and partnership. Specifically, this fund will contribute to transformative investments which repurpose and diversify town centre use and promote inclusive growth through place-based approaches. And we hope innovation will be inspired through the approaches taken by Paisley. Presiding officer, we know that Paisley is not resting on its laurels. In accepting the Academy of Urbanism Award, it's already looking to the future. What next for Paisley is the question. There's clearly no complacency at play here. The Scottish Government is supporting this through the development of a vision for Paisley Town Centre, which will build upon and develop a plan for Paisley to deliver the changes Paisley envisaged by 2027 and then 2035. And lessons being learned by the buddies will be shared and applied to the regeneration of other traditional towns and their centres across Scotland. Because as Jamie Green pointed out, they, they face the same challenges as Paisley does. Presiding officer, Paisley's football club might, to the great distress of George Adam, lie second bottom of the Premiership. But when it comes to delivering a town centre for the future, Paisley is top of the pile. Presiding officer. Thank you very much. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament. <laughs>